Bankyard Bully in here. Now pouring silver can be one of the most incredible experiences that you can do. It can also be one of the most frustrating as it doesn't always work out well. And in today's video, we're gonna be showcasing and looking at some of the good, the bad, and the ugly that has happened here on the Backyard Bullion Pouring Bench over the last couple of weeks. Now, if you are enjoying this video as we go through it, make sure to hit that thumbs up. And if you wanna see videos from us in the future like this, then hit the subscribe button, especially if you wanna see some behind the scenes footage, as we now have a new option for that in our memberships. Links are down below. But we're cracking off with a good piece today, it's a kilo plus cube of silver. My heart still races when I pour 1,000 plus grams of 1,100 degree silver. And I'm really happy that this one turned out well because you only get one shot at these big kilos. They are too big to put back in the furnace and remelt. But this one came out well with some stunning ripples and incredible patterns. We will be showcasing this piece a little more as we go throughout the next couple of weeks. There's some really cool things in store for it with its new owner. So make sure you hit that subscribe button if you want to find out what happens to this cube. It's certainly one not to miss, but it's one that came out really well and I thought we'd kick off today's video with that. The next piece, however, is one that didn't come out quite so nicely. Now here you can see we are going to be trying a smaller cube. This is the one that's around a 10 ounce mark and the customer said to me that he really wanted some amazing ripples on his cube, so that is what we strive to do. We wanna make sure that every customer that commissions a piece gets what they envisage, what they want. Now, it doesn't always happen to work out like that. You can see here that we're pouring the silver and it's going in really well, going in nicely, looks all fantastic. The right amount has gone in, no overflow, but then these little bubbles start coming up through the silver, as you can see, and I wasn't sure what was happening, a little hesitant, and this air pocket formed, this really weird bubble right at the end there. Now that's not the effect that we were looking for at all. I was really intrigued by it though, so I decided to give it a bit of a poke with my work knife just to see what would happen and it collapsed instantly. Very, very thin layer of silver on that air pocket. Now of course that's not the desired effect that we are looking for, so it goes back in the melting furnace to be poured into a new piece. Next up, we've got a Aztec Pyramid. Now, this is a really interesting mold to pour, and it usually comes out with some stunning ripples because it's such a deep mold that you get this really slow cooling effect for the silver on the top. However, one of the barriers, one of the annoying things about pouring silver from a graphite crucible is that graphite can come onto the silver and pollute it. And that comes out usually near the end of the pour, as you can see there, there's this yellow stuff floating on the top of the silver, and that's graphite dust from the degrading crucible. And that can really have a big effect on the ripple patterns that we strive so hard to get. And when you're cleaning it up, it can distort them quite significantly. Now I poured that and I immediately looked at it and I thought, I can do better, I know I can do better, I want to do better. And I know as well that the customer would want me to do better. So we poured again, we decided to go straight away again. And what I did this time was I put more silver into the crucible so that we could get as much out of possible before that graphite came at the very end. And you can see there the difference, there's hardly any graphite floating on the top of that pyramid. And as you can see, the results speak for themselves. The amount of beautiful ripples that are undistorted just far outstretch what happened in that first pour. And that's what we strive to do and to have here on the Backyard Bullion channel. Sometimes though, it works out perfectly first time. This is a new mold that I was trying and despite the fact there's a little bit of graphite floating on the top of this cap piece, it actually turned out pretty perfectly for its first attempt. There was one interesting thing there, I don't know if you caught it, a tiny piece of silver dropped from the crucible right at the end onto the solidified cat's back as you can see, it's right there in the middle, and I didn't want it to damage the piece as I was taking it out of the mold. So very carefully, just pick it off. As you can see, it was, wasn't melted together, it wasn't connected. Easy peasy, off it goes. Now one of the other challenges is always getting the silver cooled. You could just leave it there, but often I'm pouring multiple pieces at a time in a day and I don't have the space to leave them there. So picking it up and moving it away can be a challenge. Fortunately though, we've got a bit of a knack to doing it. So this next piece is a really, really interesting one, and it's one where I think it's a clear example of how atmospheric conditions can have a real impact on how silver cools and looks. Now, on the day in question, it was an exceptionally hot and humid day, and everything was looking good up to this point. You see the silver go in, everything looks fantastic, but as it starts to cool, a really weird process happened, and it was 
Very, very interesting. I don't exactly know how that has happened, but you get this incredible volcano looking. It's almost like a volcano has completely exploded, causing scarring on the landscape at the top of that bar. It's one that actually I really like the look of, and I thought to myself at the time of pouring, oh God, it hasn't come out nicely. I wanted really lovely clean ripples, but actually beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And for me, that looked a stunning piece and one not to just throw away. So we actually ended up talking with the customer about it and they really loved it too. So you can sometimes have these ugly ducklings, which actually turn out to be pretty amazing pieces. And this is one of those that I think is the exception to the rule where if something goes wrong, it's not always a bad thing. So this next piece was poured on the exact same day, just a couple of hours later. So the atmospheric conditions are very similar, but the temperature of the silver was much higher. And that definitely has a factor to play. And as you can see, the results are very, very different to that first big bar we saw. There's no dramatic volcanic eruption. There's a lot more finer, lovely ripples, but there is still a little bit of distortion at one end of the bar. Regardless, it's still a very pretty piece. A little bit frustrating that you can't replicate, whether it be the good, the bad, or the ugly, if you get a really cool looking piece like that volcano eruption bar I just did, it's, it can be very annoying, it can be frustrating as a silver pour and as a creator to not have that same effect replicated each time. But that's one thing that I love about pouring silver. Every single piece is completely different and unique. You'll have to excuse my ingenious solution to picking up this bar, it's rather heavy. It was about 20 odd ounces. Another challenge that I constantly face from pouring silver, especially the smaller molds, is making sure that you get enough or not too much silver in the mold. And it can be a little bit of a skill. Here, here you can see a Celtic round that didn't come out quite so well. It's overflown on one side, it's not filled up enough on the other. It's a myriad of failure and one that I just chuck straight back in the furnace to melt down. Now this next one was closer to being perfect, but it wasn't quite right. It looks pretty good from this outset here, but actually in the bottom right hand corner about five o'clock, it's not filled the mold properly and it's just not quite right. Now the ripples on that one are gorgeous and there's no doubting that, but I always strive for perfection. I always wanna make sure that what we have is as good as it can be. And for me, that one did not meet the quality standards. Fortunately though, third time's a charm as we try again and this one comes out perfectly. You can see there the perfect filling of the mold. It's not overflown, it's not underfilled, and the ripples are gorgeous too. So that is what we strive for, perfection as close as we can. And that is what the customer wanted and it's what the customer gets. And that is most important to us. So last up are these dragon molds, and these are really interesting ones because it's a very shallow mold, and the shallower that silver is, the harder it is to get these glorious, lovely ripples, which I always strive for. But you get some incredible patterns on these, and I thought I'd share this little trio of these dragon button rounds. In fact, I think there's four in total as I do a double pour in one of these clips, but you can see some really interesting results coming out from the silver, and. None of these are replicable. I can't make sure that I do these again and again, which is really frustrating. Again, frustration causing a big part of what we do and pour here. But you can get some very attractive looking pieces, which again are completely unique. And that's one of the cool things about this particular mold and this particular style of pouring silver. You can see here, this is probably my favorite of the lot. There's like three separate cooling pools. We didn't see it for very long on the video there, but it is a stunning piece. The last one looked like it was going to be perfect, but then just the way it cools was a bit weird. It just doesn't cool evenly and into the middle like I would normally enjoy it to do so. So there we have an array of good, bad and ugly. We'll come back to where we started with a slow motion of this one kilo cube. If you've enjoyed this video today, please do take a moment to hit the thumbs up button. It really does help everything that we do here on the channel. And if you want to see videos like this in the future, please let me know. It's the first I've done a kind of commentary overview of a pouring session or a collection of pouring sessions, I should say, as there's been a number of different days worth of work gone into this video. I quite enjoy doing this and I quite enjoy sharing those times that things don't go so well, but I'd love to know your feedback. So please do hit that comment section up 
And if you want to see a special behind the scenes type video of us pouring silver, what it's like, what we go through, and the types of things that we think about when pouring silver, then make sure you check out our memberships options. We are introducing a monthly members only video of a behind the scenes kind of style video. I think it's kind of cool to be able to share that with you. So all of that is down in the description below. Go and check it out. Otherwise, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Please make sure that you like, share, comment and subscribe for more.